Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with Golden Opportunities Coaching. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you who are seasoned veterans of what we do around here. Like, subscribe, comment below if there's a audio we can make for your benefit that would be beneficial to you. Uh, also, uh, thank you to those of you who are subscribing. If you can continue to spread the word, we'd like to get to a thousand subscribers and the proper amount of hours so that we can start donating to charity, especially during these difficult times. Your help and continued support will help us to do that. So what if today we're going to talk about dislike and common things people do to make themselves unlikable. And I'll, I'm talking about really common things that almost every person's done at least once or twice in their lifetime that they don't realize makes them unlikable or may not realize makes them unlikable. These are things that especially when I do communications coaching with folks, uh, I, I raise these as questions if they're having difficulty holding relationships or in some way partaking in meaningful, lasting relationships because these are most common for folks who think they're doing the right thing. Um, so the first one is to be overly nice. We all appreciate nice people, right? Someone who holds a door for us, somebody who might pick up uh, a few extra cents for our coffee, someone who might give us a compliment. But there's a line to be crossed, especially when you're meeting a new person. There's a line between patronization and kindness that a lot of people cross. And it usually gets crossed for most folks when they're nervous about social interaction. And they don't even realize, hey, this might be seen as me trying to come on too strong. Hey, the sicky sweetness that I'm putting out isn't my intention, but it's how it's being interpreted. So the thing to remember is when you're being nice to someone, think about could they see this as disingenuous? Could they see this as too much too soon? It's much better to lay a thin layer of niceness on consistently than one thick layer of niceness really quickly and then create problems for yourself because all of a sudden the person thinks you're disingenuous or you want something or you're trying to manipulate them or you're trying to trap them into a friendship or in romantic situations or relationship. Most often, again, people do this because they might have some anxiety or they're dealing with depression and trying really hard to be liked or they're dealing with a panic disorder, things that cause them to see themselves as needing to be overly demonstrative in order to get some level of attention or some level of, of balance in their life. The second one is, and, and the, the next two kind of go together. Um, so the, the second one is when you ask too many questions, right? Asking a person about themselves is a great way to get a person to open up. It's a great way to keep a conversation going in awkward moments. I, I tell people all the time, you know, tell me about tell me about what you like or tell me about your hobbies or tell me about things that matter to you or tell me about a cause that matters to you. Teach me about XYZ, things I don't know. People love to do this because even the most altruistic person in the world loves to talk about one key topic and that is themselves because it's the topic that most of us, 99% of us, are most invested in. We're invested in ourselves because we're having our own unique life journey. And so when someone asks about us, it makes us feel good. We get endorphins from it. But here's the thing. Asking too many questions can make you seem as though you're being interrogative or that you're trying to interrogate a person and gain information about them or you're trying to do a fact-finding mission. It can make a person question your integrity and the integrity of the desire for communication. So, um, I always tell people relationships and early communication is a volley. Actually, all communication is a volley. Give, take, give, take. Ask, share, ask, share, learn, teach, learn, teach. Regardless, good communication is all about balance. And if you're balanced, then the, the relationship or the communication style will flow naturally by proxy of the fact that at the end of the day, a person feels like they're giving and taking. The value of the balance of the fulcrum of communication is that give and take exchange. And when that exchange is somehow off kilter, the relationship, no matter how new it is, has a potential to fall apart. Now, the next thing is the other thing, which is oversharing. So 
it's important to have, a, especially if you are a person that struggles with social phobia, a person that struggle, struggles with depression, anxiety, panic attacks, panic disorders, other things of that nature. It's super important to have a list of questions. I, I encourage people to have somewhere between five and ten that they can ask that open a conversation up and then they share about those neutral topics. Oversharing is a problem for a person who's trying to look genuine, but in reality, they come off looking desperate, they come off looking anxious, they come off looking unsure of themselves, lack, with lack of confidence, lack of, of boundaries, and it really isn't a good look. This usually happens in a lot of cases with younger folks, um, let's say the generation under 30, although... If you've been through trauma and, you, and you've and you lost yourself or been in an abusive relationship, it can affect the over 30 crowd as well. But generally speaking, it seems to be uh, a younger person's challenge. Um, so always make sure that you let the other person kind of mirror image what they're comfortable sharing. Like if you're having a really intense conversation with a person and they're sharing as much as you are, that's one thing. But if you are, are sharing about your first date or how many people you've slept with or, or um, the most embarrassing thing you've ever done and you've only met a person once or twice, yeah, chances are they're going to formulate a, a negative view of you without even meaning to because it's like, wait a minute, why do I know all this stuff about you when I don't even know you like that, right? So it's important to have those boundaries. The last one that I think is equally important is the suppression of feelings. Look, none of us want to be vulnerable, right? None of us want to be left to feel uncomfortable or left to feel that we've we've given somebody leverage over ourselves. But when you come off as socially aloof or uncomfortable with emotions and you're trying to connect with somebody, they're like, wait a minute, you want me to be honest with you, but you're not being honest with me. And then that creates this, this chasm or the separation where it's like, wait, there's more risk for me to be open to you because you're not being open with me. Um, and that can create uh, issues of, of a very intense way. Um, you know, it's interesting because at the end of the day, you have to find that balance of you don't want to overshare, you don't want to undershare. So again, if we look at uh, the the act of communication like we would look at a game of tennis or badminton or volleyball. In other words, any any game where there is a, a volley involved in the process and we go, I give, I take, I give, I take, I share, I listen. I, I teach, I learn, I teach. I, and, and as long as that's the way we go into communication, it's so much easier to build relationships that way because now... The energy, the effort, the focus is is spread out appropriately so that both parties can feel or have a chance at least to feel more comfortable with each other and thereby build a better overall connection. So that's the, the viewpoint for this. If you struggle with communication challenges, please feel free to reach out. You can do so here on YouTube in the YouTube message box. I love when I get messages in my message box. But also, you can do so on Twitter at P.O. Perception. Follow me there. And uh, you can reach out through a direct message there. Those are the best ways to get in touch. But until next time, I encourage you to keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.